Okay, okay. Reading this title, you might have thought, uh, well, obviously, because looking at other artists' work is an important source for inspiration, and what's up with that differently? And yes, at first the title and topic of this video sound pretty obvious, but what I'm actually seeking to bring across in this video is that the observation of other artists' work goes much deeper than simply looking. And then also comes the question of what do we even look at? And also I was thinking about us creatives in general often forgetting to look deeper than we usually do. So as you hear, I've had quite a few thoughts in my mind lately, so of course I feel obligated to share these with you on the channel. Let's go. So yes, I am in a way assuming that you do not properly look at other artists' work. Of course, I cannot know if you, and I am now really meaning you, are really the kind of person I am trying to reach with this, maybe you do really look deeply into other artists' work, but I don't know. But the thing is, there is reason to assume that most people don't do so, let me explain. It's 2020, we live in a world filled with distractions, everything around you is trying to grab your attention. I, in this video, am trying to grab your attention. And it has seemed to become quite clear that we humans tend to be willing to get distracted. But with so many choices around us, we rarely fully fall into one or another distraction, but instead spread our distraction to possibly not miss any of all these distractions. The problem that then arises is that the quality of attention we give to each of these distractions is pretty weak. Let me give you an example, Instagram. Instagram is a distraction machine, and Instagram as an app can't really be counted as one distraction I find because Instagram has pretty much an endless amount of distractions within itself. It's a bit like an IKEA store that has arrows leading you around the store but never out of the store. And so, I think, when someone claims that they view other artists' work on Instagram, in this case I'm speaking of photography and cinematography, there are two ways this can look like. One way, the shallower way, which aims for quantity, is to scroll through Instagram and look at each post for roughly a second or less. The other way, which aims for quality, enables a deeper look into the work by scrolling slowly and intentionally through Instagram. This then might even be less of a distraction and more of an intentional activity of engaging with other artists' work and trying to pick out elements which we enjoy and might want to integrate into our own art. And as a side note, let me mention that I don't think Instagram is the optimal place to view work like photography due to the size, the compression, etc. But it is super convenient, I get it, and I use it myself, but I just wanted to mention that so that it doesn't sound like I'm suggesting Instagram is the best place to view the work of other creatives or something. So do you understand where I'm going with this? In this video, I want to remind you of the importance of looking at other artists' work, but intentionally, not 2020 style. And please don't misunderstand me here, I am absolutely guilty of just unintentionally scrolling down Instagram myself. But I think everyone does that at times, and what counts is that we notice it and we get aware of it and try to improve our behaviour. Anyway, let's get back to the thoughts on looking at other artists' work and why it's important. I've recently found a few elements in my work which I know are the influence of certain people's work I've seen and admired. So, one aspect I am implying here, which I suppose is the most obvious, is that viewing other artists' work will shape your own work and influence what you create. This can be as simple as the general style, the genre, or the subject, but it can also be more detailed, such as certain colors, levels of contrast, or even the aspect ratio. What I think is amazing about this is that the viewing of other artists' work can open doors to new techniques and ideas in all sorts of small ways. This afternoon I was chatting on the phone with my friend Joseph and we coincidentally landed onto this topic so I decided to ask him if he has looked deeply into any artist's work and if so, who? I've just had an excessive uh, black and white day that has lasted for around 3 months I would say and that has been due to Sebastião Zarcado um, I guessed so and, Yeah <laughs> I, I got his, his uh, book Genesis um, for my birthday and the pictures there are just um, so strong composition wise and it's just light wise um, that it just it just really reduces photography to what it is to just taking adding borders to something that you see in life and making it beautiful so as you heard, Joseph got a lot of inspiration out of Salgado's photography, and I can confirm he was definitely in a black and white phase, and I would say that most of the influences he got from the photography was for the visual style, but I want to elaborate on the fact that the impact an artist can have on you goes further than that. 
I have found that it doesn't end with the visual input we can gain, but it continues with the inspiration with regards to content. The topics and themes artists incorporate into their work can start off a spinning in your mind which leads you to creating a project about a topic that before you didn't consider to be something you'd make a project about. But I think all of these positive effects heavily depend on a factor I was reminded of a while ago. The work you look at needs to be diverse. Let's say if I were a portrait photographer, I guess most photographers I would look up to then would also be portrait photographers. However, I've come to notice how beneficial it can be to actually inspect the other genres as well. I recently mentioned that I got quite inspired by the look of Willem Verbeek's photography. His work often has this really low contrast look to it. While looking closely at his photography, I noticed that the low contrast is one of the key things that I enjoy of the look he creates. Willem does a mixture of different photography genres, but I think it's safe to say that these photos here do not come into the same genre as the photographs I like to make. A few weeks ago, I showed you the photos from this session here. Do you see a similarity? I hope you do, because I gave these photographs a similar low contrast look as Willem likes to do because I thought it was beautiful in his photography. I hope it worked. So to get back to the point I'm trying to make here, I think by looking closely at other work that doesn't really fit into the kind of things you like to create, can give you a lot of fresh inspiration, which you can integrate into your work, which might be a completely different genre. I think this mix of different elements has really improved my own work, so I assume this might even be something worth generalizing and spreading. Therefore, I wanted to share these thoughts of mine with you here. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Honestly, I'm a little worried that the structure of this video is kind of all over the place, but I hope you got the gist of what I'm trying to communicate here. So if you have any thoughts, please feel encouraged to share them in the comments for me and the community to read. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this little, slightly messy essay of a few recent thoughts. If so, leave a like, that would help me out to get noticed by the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll hopefully see you again next week in the next video. Until then. Goodbye.